Algerian Foreign Ministry spokesman has described the U.S. State Department's report on human trafficking in Algeria as a non-event. National scene heavyweight political personalities attended the ceremony of renewing the twining agreement between Central Algiers municipality and the Saharan Layoun city. And U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Doha for talks with the foreign ministers of Gulf Arab countries in order to address their concerns over what they called negative Iranian influence in the region. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the News Live, and welcome to this English News Edition. First in our news file, according to the spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Abdelaziz Ben Ali Sharif, the Algerian Foreign Ministry has lodged diplomatic rep representations with the American State Department about the false allegations included in the 2015 report issued by the U.S. site concerning the human trafficking phenomenon. In a response to an American report which ranked Algeria as one of the biggest human trafficking countries, in the words of the spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Abdelaziz Ben Ali Sharif, Algeria described the report as a non-event and accused the United States of automatic repetitive promotion to false allegations, which reflects its ignorance to Algerian values and its government's commitments. The response endorses the National Human Rights Organization that was surprised by this American unjustified move. <laughs> These people accuse us of human trafficking. Where did they come up with that? I told the American ambassador to Algeria to give us names and addresses and we will check if this phenomenon really exists. This is not true at all. The situation of human rights in Algeria is very humble. The Algerian foreign ministry who protested diplomatically against its American counterpart about the content of the 2015 state report about human trafficking and in a statement posted by the Algerian press service which say that the report that kept Algeria for the fifth year in a row within the blacklist of human trafficking countries and which was based on false observations claiming that the Algerian authorities couldn't achieve any improvement in its efforts of preventing human trafficking. These claims remain false and without proof according to the foreign ministry statement which considered these allegations as non-event that could neither affect Algeria's image in the international scene nor the quality of the Algerian-American dialogue. National scene heavyweight political personalities attended the ceremony of renewing the twining agreement between Central Algiers municipality and Saharan Layoun city. The ceremony wrapped up with the kickoff of a human aids convoy to the Sahrawi people. Usama Sousi for more details. Despite the pressure Algeria faces, we stick to our supportive approach to the Western Saharan issue. With these words, the head of the People's Municipal Assembly of Central Algiers, Abdel Hakim Battaj, expressed Algeria's intention to renew the twinning agreement between Central Algiers and the Sahrawi Layoun city. Our intention is recognizing the self-determination of Sahrawi people, despite the pressure we're facing from some parts of the world. A considerable political and media gathering attended the ceremony of the twinning agreement in a clear message that emphasizes Algeria's supportive stance to the Western Saharan issue as a government and people. There are some terms of cultural, administrative and sports exchange and the craftsmen of Central Algiers will participate in September and October. In its 13 edition, the twinning agreement between Central Algiers municipality and its Sahrawi counterpart of Layoun witnessed a Sahrawi intention to expand this agreement to other fields and other municipalities of Algeria. We saw that the agreement should include different fields. Apart from the cultural and organizational exchanges, we wanted to include Algeria's steadfast role in the political scene and its support to the Sahrawi people. The week of solidarity and brotherhood with the Sahrawi people wrapped up with a kickoff of a humanitarian aid convoy to the Sahrawi people launched by the head of People's National Assembly, Mohammed Larbi Wild Khalifa. 
According to APS news agency Maghrib or Maghrib Leasing Algeria Company is to issue a 2 billion dinar five-year bond or the equivalent of 19.5 million euros. It has obtained the approval of the Commission for the Organization and Supervision of Stock Exchange Transactions. The move is expected to improve national SAM's access to bank credit. Mohamed Baraswan. The bond issue should help develop Algeria's financial market, which is not highly developed, according to the managing director of the Association of Banks and Financial Institutions, quoted by local media outlets. He believes that it is necessary to speed up its development so that a public investment effort is gradually taken over by this market. The Algerian government has been enjoined by President Abdelaziz Bouteflika to implement measures to boost the country's financial sector in order to contribute to the development of businesses, especially small and medium-sized enterprises (SMEs), while mobilizing local savings and investment financing in the economic sphere. While SMEs represent more than 90% of companies here in Algeria, at least half of that number struggle to gain access to banking services, denying them the opportunity to help the national economy grow faster, according to the World Bank. This year's summer season witnessed Algerians changing their touristic destinations after it was preserved during previous years on Tunisia. However, the unstable security situation that prompted Algerian vacations to opt for Algerian coastal provinces to spend their holidays safely. Nevertheless, it only increased pressure on hotels that have become unable to accommodate them all. Hinsminalas. After being one of the top holiday destinations for Algerians, attracting thousands of them with the beginning of every summer season, Tunisia's current critical security situation has left Algerians with no choice but to opt for a stay in coastal provinces inside the country due to the latter's serene and stable state. With the instability witnessed these days in Tunisia, we opted to stay in our country where there is safety and security. I plan to travel to Tunisia with my colleagues for the holidays. But as you know, the security situation currently, I chose Bijaya, where I know I'll be safe. With the majority of Algerians cancelling their reservations in Tunisian hotels and choosing coastal provinces instead has unfortunately increased pressure on hotels and complexes who grew unable to accommodate everyone, has opened the field in front of many to control rent prices of apartments and houses costing sometimes an arm and a leg. <laughs> They seize the opportunity when they see a lot of demand. This is why Algerians would rather spend their holidays abroad. Algerians changing of their touristic destinations this year favor Algeria for its mesmerizing places and stability. Further urges the authorities concerned to be in charge of ensuring their comfort. Through building hotels and touristic resorts, boosting therefore a sector which has long been in the shadows. Moving on to regional news, and in Mali, armed men staged an attack on an army post in a north village early Monday, killing at least 10 soldiers. The attackers came on motorcycles around 5 a.m. into Gurma Raurus, about 160 kilometers southeast of the northern city of Timbuktu, according to local sources. The attack comes two days after two Malian soldiers were killed and five others were injured in the south during an ambush on their convoy. The ambush occurred roughly 400 kilometers north of the capital, Bamako. The Nigerian army has announced the rescue of 178 people from the hands of the terrorist group Boko Haram in the north, northern state of Borno. The raids followed a Boko Haram attack on a village which left 13 dead and several injured. Amin Mustua. The Nigerian army announced the rescue of 178 hostages held by the terrorist group Boko Haram yesterday evening. The rescue occurred as part of a series of raids which destroyed a number of Boko Haram camps in the northern Nigerian state of Borno. 
According to Nigerian Army spokesman Tukur Gasau, 101 of the hostages freed were to children and 67 were women. Gasau also confirmed the subsequent capture of a Boko Haram commander. The raids come following a Boko Haram attack earlier in the day in Malari village, which left some 13 dead and 27 injured. Recently elected Nigerian President Mohamed Buhari has vowed to eliminate the group as part of his campaign pledges. He has enlisted the help of a multinational joint task force of some 9,000 troops from neighboring countries Cameroon, Benin, Niger and Chad. But its planned start of operations on the 31st of July has been delayed due to a lack of funding and political will. Security and intelligence chiefs from around Central Africa are meeting today in Gabon in order to establish a regional counterterrorism strategy with which to counter the terrorist group. Hundreds have been rescued from Boko Haram this year and large territorial gains have been made over the group in the same period, but the search for the 276 girls kidnapped from Chibok school in April 2014 continues. Iraq US-led airstrikes targeting the so-called ISIS terror group in Iraq and Syria likely have killed hundreds of civilians, a report by an independent monitoring group said Monday. The coalition had no immediate comment. The report by Air Wars, a project aimed at tracking the international airstrikes targeting the extremists, said it believed 55 or 57 specific strikes killed at least 494 civilians and caused 48 suspected friendly fire deaths. While Air Wars noted that difficulty of verifying information in territory held by the extremist group, which has beheaded journalists and shot dead activists, other groups have reported similar casualties from the US led airstrikes. And now in relation with the Iranian nuclear file, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Doha for talks with the foreign ministers of Gulf Arab countries in order to address their concerns over what they called negative Iranian influence in the region. Amin Mustawa. Following his visit to the Egyptian capital Cairo, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Doha, Qatar in order to meet with Gulf Arab officials and ease their fears surrounding the terms of the recent nuclear deal struck with Iran in Austria. The Gulf states remain fearful of Iran's influence in the region and accuse the country of fueling unrest in Syria, Iraq and Yemen. Kerry defended the deal, acknowledging Iran's negative role, but stating it would be easier to deal with Tehran if it cannot develop a nuclear arsenal. Speaking to reporters in Cairo, Kerry said, Iran is engaged in destabilizing activities in the region, and that is why it is so important to ensure that Iran's nuclear program remains wholly peaceful. There can be absolutely no question that the Vienna Plan, if implemented, will make Egypt and all the countries of this region safer than they otherwise would be. Kerry's meeting with the foreign ministers of the Gulf Cooperation Council today followed the May meeting that U.S. President Barack Obama had with Arab leaders at Camp David, during which Obama promised enhanced security cooperation and the facilitation of weapons sales in order to ward against the Iranian threat. Making good on that promise, the American State Department authorized the sale of close to $6 billion worth of advanced weaponry systems to Saudi Arabia. For their part, Iranian authorities have continuously emphasized upon the purely peaceful character of their nuclear program. Although the nuclear deal signed last month initially appeared to be a rare success in the pursuit of peace in the region, it is becoming increasingly apparent that tensions linger, with increased militarization only further exacerbating these. In other world news, media workers, activists and supporters had a rally in Mexico City protesting over the murder of press photographer Ruben Espinoza, the seventh journalist killed in Mexico this year. The bodies of Ruben Espinoza, who worked for the prominent magazine or Proceso and for other people, were found bound after being tortured in an apartment in the Narvard neighborhood of Mexico City, according to news reports. Karim Fazakri. A crowd of several thousand people gathered in the capital of Mexico to denounce the death of a Mexican photographer killed early Saturday morning, the seventh journalist killed in Mexico this year. Many carried cardboard cutout photos of the victim, who was one of five people found shot dead in an apartment in the city on Friday. Espinosa Roben had recently arrived in the capital from Veracruz state, where he claimed he had felt threatened by the governor Javier Duarte. To those at the rally, the killing was a reminder of the violence journalists face here. Journalists are very angry, frightened and angry, because we are witnessing a hunt for journalists. 
pues creo que igual que todos, con una tristeza Like others, I feel deeply sad and indignant, unable to react to this situation adequately. Spinoza, who was 31, had specialized in documenting local social movements in Veracruz, often for the prominent magazine Proceso. Mr. Espinosa often covered politics in Veracruz, a state in southeast Mexico known to be a hostile place for journalists, and he spoke out against the harassment of fellow journalists. Many of his reports were critical of Governor Duarte and the ruling PRI party. Dennis Dresser, a political analyst at the protest, questioned how the government could keep its support when it was being blamed for rising violence and scandals that have ensnared the president, Enrique Peña Nieto. The best way to keep a country quiet is by killing its journalists, Ms. Dresser said. Way back to Algeria now, the International Timgad Music Festival, now being held in eastern Algeria, returns this year with a rich and varied program. From Thursday, the July the 13th until August the 6th, 40 Algerian and foreign artists are performing on stage at the outdoor theater of the archaeological city. The fourth night of the festival was shot by the news cameras. Kerim Fazakwi. The International Timgad Festival returns this year with a rich program. From Thursday, July 30th until August 6th, 40 Algerian and foreign artists are performing on stage at the outdoor theater of the archaeological city. Jamawi Africa Band rumbled the theater with their outstanding performance and refreshing music, which made the present audiences move to their groove. In this party, however, the music band was pretty disappointed because of the organization, which led to almost empty seats. We came here for the audiences of Batna province, who we missed and who missed us a lot on their turn. However, as was painted, the turnout was quite humble and somewhat disappointing. We're talking about circa 200 people because we started a little little late because of the organization, despite the fact that we came pretty early since 5 p.m. But I think there should be more communication, better transportation service from downtown to this area. Many modern songs with various rhythms and styles were performed by this amazing young band to the delight of the present audiences whose number were humble, yet the atmosphere they threw was that of a large crowd. We thank you a lot for this. It's an amazing ambience. I would like to thank the band. They are magnificent. They always deal with social problems in their songs, something we can relate to. We came here to blow off some steam. It's very nice, thank God. We had very good time and we thank the performers for their amazing job. They made us proud as Algerians. May these Algerian festivities always continue. It's something superb. Hopefully it will last. This band, which made an international name, is among many outstanding participants in the 37th edition of Timgad International Music Festival, whose festivities continue until the 6th of the current month. And finally, to wrap it up, the eastern Algerian province of Tbilisi is home for history, civilization, and authentic folklore. All these were under spotlight during the Cultural Week of Tbilisi, which kicked off in a feast-like atmosphere marked by the dazzling performance of a traditional music band, Hintzmilras. A traditional wedding, carrying an impetus of the heritage and traditions, forming a historical gate through which Algiers' audience had traveled to the eastern province of Tabasa. I'm really happy to be here. It's an honor. Tabasa is a historical province known for its traditions and handicraft. People should come here. They're in for a treat. Our youth should hold on to their traditions. Tabasa home for history, civilization, and authentic folklore. All these were under spotlight during the Cultural Week of Tibisa, which kicked off in a feasty atmosphere accompanied by the performance of Mizwa traditional musical group. We brought a delegation from the province of Tibisa to this national event. Like every province, Tibisa has its own culture, heritage, and traditions, having went through seven civilizations. The celebratory event gathered every tradition and craft the province proudly encloses. There are many traditions to be abounds. I am here to represent Tbilisi women and her preservation of the traditional outfit. 
under the impressive horse performances and fantasia. These people transcribed and in the language of authenticity the history of their beloved country, Algeria. The end of our English news edition. Thank you so much for following us. Bye bye.